We go live. And we are live, people. Welcome to episode six of the Superior Hour. We've got the full cast of characters this week. Back from hiatus, fighting war, famine, fame, the one and only Charles. How's it going, man? No audio. The battle got to him, lost his voice. Still can't hear him. Charles, we miss you. <laughs> Next up, the one and only Bored Buddha, meditator, focuser, man with the ball head. <laughs> that is That's right. Can you hear me now? <laughs> yeah, we can hear you. Yeah. How's it going? Okay, doing pretty good. Um, very excited to discuss this week's news and shows. All righty. Oh. You mean the lackluster news and well, news the somewhat news decent is, shows. Is light, was light, but let's let's just get on to some some movie news. Starting off with Justice League, of course, because you know it's got to be some Justice League stuff every week. Um, runtime looks like it's official at two hours and one minute. That being said, though, a lot of people are still saying that's a little placeholder. What do you think about that runtime? Because it looks like it might be two hours and ten minutes with ten minutes of credits added, but. Two hours for this movie. Well, I thought the runtime was going to be closer to three hours. Uh, right now, it's two hours is what's looking. Uh, studio, um, because tickets would go on sale tomorrow. Oh, okay. Speaking of tickets, I still have yet to buy my last Jedi tickets. Neither have I. I already have mine. Well, I tried to buy the tickets the other day on Fandango, but for some reason, it wouldn't let me pick my seat. Ooh, okay, it's not good. Yeah. yeah. So I had to cancel the order. Go back to it at a later date. Okay. Yeah. All right. So everybody's cool with the tower time and all the stuff that's happened in the movie. You guys are okay with it? Is that something well, you, uh, what, uh, you mean uh, Justice League time? Yeah, I mean, yeah. I think that's a placeholder because if this movie comes in at two hours, literally, that means this movie's about an hour and 45 minutes long. Mm -hmm. No, an hour and, an hour and uh, 50 minutes. Credits only 10. Mm -hmm. Regardless, that's kind of short, especially knowing that BVS was longer and so was Man of Steel. True. So Holly Holly Day Evolution says, "Don't want to see a three-hour Justice League movie. Might be good for DVD though." Now there is word that they will be an extended cut, and a lot of so a lot of scenes we've heard have been cut are the Lex Luthor with Deathstroke scene was also cut out. Uh, Flash visiting his dad that we saw in the initial trailer. We haven't seen any more trailers anymore. That has been cut out as well. I think that one has definitely been cut out. Um, Iris West, most likely, been cut out as well. So it's a lot of stuff that's been Man. snipped. I hope this doesn't turn into another BVS. Um, I mean, as long as it's a Flash explanation scene, that's all you need. And he does his cool stuff, so we just have to wait and see. But Well, the thing is, despite all the hate that BVS got when it was doing its theatrical run, I enjoyed it. Despite its flaws, I enjoyed it. So if even if it's going to be just like another theatrical like version of B BVS, then I'm still going to enjoy it. I'm still going to have a good time with Justice League. However, the whole if the two hours and one minute run time is going to be accurate that might concern me because I don't really like it when movies are short like that. I prefer my movies to be long because, well, I like long movies. Okay. It's, um, it, it's kind of part of the reason why I, I mean, I did enjoy dark tower. I just didn't like how short it was. That's how it needs to be a longer movie. But meanwhile, yeah. also this week uh, is cyborg week mm -hmm. and uh, they it's dropped cyborg week with wonder woman. No, it's not Wonder Woman week. It's Cyborg and Wonder Woman week. I saw it pop up on my Facebook. Yeah. Oh, so I guess Wonder Woman video will come up later on this week then. Probably, but it was like a joint week with them too, which I honestly don't give a crap about all the crap they're doing. Just give me my movie and let's move on. Well, some new images from Cyborg week. Cyborg and Wonder Woman right there. You can see Cyborg. He's cool tech. Um... That is Stefan Wolf down there. The cyborg's about to blast him. I uh, see that's his dad. Can you see that? 
uh, that black dude there. We really can't see if he's black. <laughs> That's probably his dad and the scientist. Cyborg again. Cyborg. 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 And there you have it. All this is from Super Air Ride. I like to go to message boards, get my, my news. Yes, yes. You know, we like, you know, you like to just chit chat away. Hey, hey, I'm saying just some good stuff. Anyway, um, Han Solo title has been revealed as Solo Wars. Um, thoughts? I thought the name of the movie was announced to be called just Solo, not Solo Wars. Sorry, it's Solo, but yeah, I mean, yeah. not bad. Yeah. Well, the name sucks. Oh, okay. I don't want to swear. All right, all right. Look, I know Lou said that he didn't like the like the title, but I don't have a problem with it because it fits with the type of titles that they've been doing, especially with what they did with Rogue One, where the movie Rogue One was called that because of the team of rebels that found the plans was called Rogue One. Well, that's and, fine. It makes and, sense. And this then of course Han Solo. And, Just call it Han Solo and be done with. It's just the name Solo, sure, is a bit short. They could have called it Han Solo, but calling it Solo, I don't know. Maybe they were trying to be cool, but I don't really have a problem with it. It fits with what they're trying to do with the anthology. It's called Solo, a Star Wars story. It's a bad name. It's a sorry-ass name. Like I said, why didn't they just call it YOLO? <laughs> well, because YOLO isn't related to Star Wars? It doesn't matter. You only live once. Oh, look at that tie in there. Anyway, uh, we don't like it in general. Um, the name sucks. The guy who's playing Han Solo looks like he's going to suck. This movie should have never been made. They need to quit this stupid anthology crap and just give us movies we really want. Not no stupid Han Solo. For that, why don't you just give me Darth Vader? Let him roam the galaxy and kill everybody. I'd enjoy that more than freaking Han Solo. Well, Han Solo is a badass, man, so... Oh, please. I don't go back and play with Chewie on the ship. Well, so, um, I, do, oh. I, do, I do agree that the actor they picked to play Han Solo was a bad choice, especially with the news that we heard about him, his, scene, his acting being so bad that they had to put him through acting classes to improve him. Uh, personally, I think they should have gone with the kid from Kingsman. He was he was one of the runner ups for the Yeah, casting. I mean, I, I definitely agree they should have, but since they haven't, you just have to deal with what we have to deal with. Exactly. Pretty much. But um yeah, you know, we just have to see. Um I'm just not sure how that actually how this movie's gonna do. It's, it's, you know, Ron Howard will do a good job in trying to make it work. I'll put it that way. I'm pretty sure Howard did what he could do with it, but you know, it's just I have no faith in it because of the dude solo. Really, guys, you could have come up with something a little more original. Hmm? Solo, a no, Star no. Wars. Why didn't you just call it uh, Star Wars Rebel Run? Han Solo is a rebel, right? Just call it something, I don't, but not solo. Um, Holiday Evolution says Justice League might be overhyped. Which brings me to a topic. It's not in the notes, but uh, Umberto said uh, Justice League is tracking much better than expected. I was tracking very well, as you to be precise. That's what he said. So um, it looks like at least the the marketing campaign is looks like it's kicking in well. Re you know, basically all the ads are showing the same thing. There's just a little bit more and a little bit more, and that's pretty much it. So that's I guess that's a good thing for them. Um, going into some more some TV news, uh, Fringe director Brad Anderson will helm DC's Titans pilot episode. Uh, he was the one that did the pilot and a lot of the episodes in Fringe. I like Fringe, so I mean, I never saw Fringe, but before we really jump ahead, the kid from Iron Man three will be, and in, 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 in Avengers four, yeah, and then. This relates to the TV news to our Star Trek fans out there. We're getting a season two. Of course. That I mean, was greenlit today. The show's been doing very well. So, I think the show's doing great. I just love the fact that, you know, it's part of the Mirror Universe. It's not the Mirror Universe. Did you watch the video I gave you? The Collider video? Yeah. Those guys are Star Trek aficionados. 
They know what they're talking about. If they say this is the mirror universe, it's the fucking mirror universe. Dude, dude the thing is that they're, they're with Starfleet. The Starfleet never existed in the mirror universe. It was never formed. Everything that's going on in the show right now is totally off the books. It's not the mirror universe because if it was, this okay. wouldn't be Starfleet. It would be the Terran Empire. That's exactly what it would be, and it's not. Not everything has to mimic what was done before. Yes, it does, because this no, is the don't. prime universe. No, it don't, because the simple fact, they never had a hollow deck in any of the previous episodes leading up into, what was it, the next generation? So why is there a hollow deck on the Starship Discovery? I don't fucking know. All, I'm sorry for my language, but all, all I know is that this Thank is you not, very much. This is not the mirror universe. <laughs> Okay, and when you're kids. wrong, you will apologize. Okay, I am not going to apologize. Okay, kids, let's calm down now. I mean, I mean, okay, look, it may or may not be mirrored universe. If it is the mirror universe, it is. They're rebooting it. They can because the, the mirror universe is not part of the main universe. So it really doesn't matter. You can do your own reboot. And maybe this is how the Terror Empire actually starts. Who knows? Oh no. Oh, damn it. This, look, it's just, if this is the mere universe, the Terran Empire would have already been formed because they were formed shortly after First Contact. If you had saw that episode of Enterprise where the Vulcans came down to Earth and Zephyrin Cochran saw them, instead of holding out his hand to shake his hand, he pulls a shotgun out of his jacket and shoots the Vulcans dead. That starts down the path towards the Terran Empire. And I think the Terran Empire was formed a few decades after that. But well, you true. realize that this isn't that error. This is now Brian right. Fuller's you, error, you, you, and they're going to do what they wait, want to before, do. Before, before you get pissed and you miss it, you do understand that if you have a mirror universe, right, that means, look, they could also be doing the DC path of a mirror universe. This is a different one. It could definitely be that. You don't have to have, remember, you don't have to have one universe just because it's going to be parallel or it's in different times or whatever the case may be. So it might be called the mirror universe, but just not that one. There was only ever one mirror universe. Otherwise, if you oh, have more than God. one, it defeats the purpose of the existence of the Do mirror you universe. you realize, Charles, things were meant to be changed. Comics were meant to be changed. I am, I'm things just changed. <laughs> The only I, word that I got to describe this is that they are messing up the continuity. Not really. It's not messing up the main timeline. As long as he doesn't mess up the main timeline, he doesn't matter. Look, man, that's, it's not going to matter. I'm sure that's how they, I'm sure that's how they are going with it. It's like, look, we can play around with this because even with the Terran Empire, unless you're a hardcore Star Trek fan, you don't know. A casual Star Trek fan will remember, yes, Enterprise. Yes, they remember... Uh, Deep Space Nine, they remember all those shows, they don't remember the Marie Universe. So I'm just saying that they probably just said, you know what, let's reboot it. Let's change it up. Let's do something else. But or, it, the thing is, is that rebooting it is rebooting it like the way you described it is basically confirming that the producers and the writers think the audience is stupid and they're not going to pick up on that. And that's even worse. No, that's not true because you know what? I didn't remember the Mirror Universe until somebody, until you guys started talking about it. I have watched every bloody Star Trek. I'm not dumb. I'm just going, yeah, but, I don't remember, right? Whether you remember it or not is irrelevant. It's what did happen. It does, they shouldn't care if you saw it or not. They need to stay true to what was done. Not necessarily so. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Louis like, look, you can't, look, and again, we don't know. So... Look, you have to understand, we have no idea. People are guesstimating. And even if, like I said, it could be an alternate universe of sort, they just call it a mirror universe anyway. Oh Nobody God. knows. No one has I mean, what the anything. hell, dude? We've so got Captain Lorca getting busy with his admiral. Yeah, I thought I thought that was a little weird. It's like, oh, like whatever happened to like don't fraternize within the ranks. Really? But really, really like but you didn't crash the back story from the very first day. Come on. <laughs> You yeah. didn't get that be beforehand. The way yeah. that they would talk to each other My when everybody friend. left the room, yeah. they would start talking by first name basis. You knew that they had something deeper than just some friendship through Starfleet. Now, nah, homie used to tap it back in the day, and probably something came up where they went their separate ways because of Starfleet. 
And they always had that bond that every now and then when we hook up, you're just a booty call. I, lo I love how he decided not to save her. He know. <laughs> He's a player. Yeah, no, no. It was just that, you know, when she when she said she was going to basically strip of his, of his shit, he was like, all right, I have to find a way. And then you're like, oh, a ship, she was ambushed. So we should go. Uh, no, let's follow the protocol. She said I should follow the protocol. So let's let's do that. <laughs> That was that was just bad. It was bad. Oh man! But, but before we keep talking about Star Trek Discovery episode six, going through all the rest of the TV news, um, Freeform has revealed the air date for Cloak and Daga, which is uh, coming on Freeform, and the air date for that is Thursdays. Thursdays, uh, twenty eighteen lineup. Uh -huh. um, DC Titans cast Big Hero Six, uh, Ryan Potter as uh, Beast Boy. So I'm going to share his image for you guys here quickly. So at least you know who he is. Boom, boom, boom. There he is. He will be playing Beast Boy. So that is that. I'm wondering, are they going to pull it kind of like the Vixen way? Or are they going to really go CG with the shifting of animals that he goes into? He has to shift the animals. He doesn't Vixen. He doesn't do that at all. So he has to. He yeah, actually has to change the animal. Uh, I mean, unless unless they want to totally rewrite that completely. And into the Badlands actor uh, was joining Game of Thrones final season. Uh, this is one of the Scars guards, I believe, right? Yeah, uh, he was in the second season, like one or two episodes. Uh, who? Uh, who? What's his? What's his name? That's the actor. Uh, uh, no, that's not one, that's not one of the uh, one of I the. Think, I, thought was, I thought it was one of the Scars guys. But no, he's like, not. That's not no. Gustav. He looks like Gustav, but it's not him. Yeah, I know. That's what I was like. He, I, I thought he was immediately. Anyway, um, so that's that. Um, do you guys want a Justice League rumor? Which one? This is this you is. No, me rumors me. don't bother me. Yeah, I'm just saying. Okay, rumor people, if you want to hear it. Uh, um, yeah, we all know Green Lantern is going to be in the movie. I mean, you've heard that rumor for a long time. Um, the actor who might be playing Green Lantern, again, this is rumor. I don't know. I have no confirmation. Um, Please not Army Hammer. No, not Army Hammer. Um, he's playing. Uh, he's going to be playing Jack Ryan on uh, Amazon. Oh, that guy? Yeah. 13 hours. Uh, I forgot his name. Krasinski? Wasn't he in the office? Yeah, no. Krasinski. Like, uh, Krasinski. Yeah, something Krasinski. Yeah, what's his name from the office, man? Uh, he's gonna. Be, he's gonna be uh, Hal Jordan. Uh, you want Army Hammer? Pick one. Uh, I'll take him over Army Hammer. Anyway. What's his name again? Oh my God! No, I'm, just... I'm, look, I'm looking it up. I'm looking it up. Um, shit. Lewinsky. No. Uh, U.S. TV series. Uh, let's see. All right, looking it up. Um, let's see. John John, Kras John, John Krasinski. Krasinski. Yeah. yeah, John Krasinski. That's just a rumor. Yeah, that, just that, that, that's going to be Hal Jordan. Okay. Well, it rumored to be Hal Jordan. Rumor. Maybe. I didn't say. Okay, but who's the rumor? Who's the source breaking the rumor? I can't yeah. tell you. I can't tell you. Like Really? Like, really? Yeah, I can't. I really can't tell you. It ain't Umberto. No, it's not Umberto. So take it with a massive grain of salt. Super massive. It's not even like just massive grain of salt. But I can see him. Yeah, I can see him as um, yeah. as Hal Jordan. But uh, I don't know. Just no he, holiday. Will Smith is our um, dead shot. Yeah. So there's, there's no answer. yeah. Will Smith is already in the DCEU. Um, but yeah, so that that is that's just again super massive rumor. Take salt, throw it on top, like just pour the whole thing. It could be fully false, but it's not something to just go around along with and, and see see who it is. Um, but the other rumor um, I've heard is that a Green Lantern rumor again, salt might might show up at the beginning of the movie in the prologue. Remember when the whole war with uh, Darkseid, uh, with the Amazonians, and 
Atlanteans and man. So they're doing the Return of the King thing. Yeah. So it could be that. Actually, no, not even Return of the King. The Fellowship Re of the Ring. Fellowship of the Ring. Very first prologue. Yeah, in that too as well. So yeah, take a grain of salt. Super. Could be wrong. Well, I'm just going to wait until the movie comes out next month because it's like, what, less than a month until it comes out? Yeah, less than a month, yeah. Yeah. So we'll see. But um, let's move on to talk about Star Trek, episode six. Okay, we'll start right. with Star Trek. Cool. Yeah, because, you know, um, what do you say? Something worth talking about. Yeah. Because uh, I sat episode. there tonight and I actually watched The Walking Dead. And God, the show still sucks. I went to give it a try because people have been asking if we were going to do it, and the show still sucks. So will I continue? Maybe, because the show still sucks. <laughs> All right, before you lament on The Walking Dead, but let's start off with Star Trek. Uh, Charles, since you haven't been here for a while, go ahead. Let us know your thoughts. Um, Star Trek has been great. Um, it's, to be honest, I feel like it's been getting better with every episode. Is uh, what I what I've been thinking. Uh, the most recent episode was a nice change of pace. It didn't really focus on the clean on war, but it did focus more on the relationship between Sarek and Michael. And I really like that. I like how we finally saw Amanda Spock's mother. I like that we saw her, and I do like that actress. I've seen her in other stuff, and she's very talented. So it's nice to see her. Although a part of myself was kind of hoping that Winona Ryder would show up at some point, <laughs> but. Uh, but that wouldn't have happened. But uh, she's doing Stranger Things currently. But yeah. uh, but no, I, I thought the episode was great. Um, well, um, the new character they introduced, the one that was introduced last week, uh, the new security chief, I like him. I like him a lot. I can definitely see a potential romance developing between him and Michael, possibly. The guy is a Klingon. He's a what? That's the speculation. The guy is that straight up a Klingon. He's a Klingon. He's a clean on that underwent like uh, like well, cosmetic what, surgery. What he said he probably did a mind transfer oh, and so his so body is know. somewhere else. But the way it was broken down, the guy who's supposed to play um, remember when he got stranded back on the Sinju with the, the girl, the, the albino, the albino clean on guy. Yeah, yeah. Well, now remember, I believe it was last week. The girl was on a new ship. So where is her mate? How'd she get off the Sinju? Yeah, because remember, remember. So two episodes back, she said, "You know, we've lost that ship. It's okay, but we can win every. We can get everything back. You know, my people are known to be spies and all this kind of stuff." And he says, "Then what do I need to do?" She says, "You have to lose everything." And I was like, I sat down there and went, "He already lost the ship. He, that's the biggest thing he ever had." He has no followers. He's down. So what does he mean lose everything? And then you get to the last week's episode, and this guy was, uh, you know, also the mate of the the Klingon lady. We use the same lady that was, you know, I forgot her name, but she was the same Klingon uh, spy lady. And they kind of escaped. To me, that escape felt it just a little bit easy. The woman, the, the the female Klingon that was the captain of that ship was not the same woman that was with the albino Klingon. It wasn't the same. No, it was. The, no, it wasn't. It was It was not the same because their skin color was different. No, skin color is the same. We'll watch it again. Same. Same. I'm serious. And again, the outfit was the same. And remember, the, where, if you know that with Star Trek again, to make it easier for people who are fans, not fans, you can't have somebody wearing the same outfit as a key character and then have somebody who's just a one-off in one episode have the same outfit. They were wearing the same outfit, that white uh, robe. And trust me, watch it again and then go back quickly and just watch the episode with her and listen to the voices. Or we could actually just, can somebody go to IMDb, please? And check that out. Gotta see, gotta see. Star Trek Discovery. Here we go. Ba -da -ba 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 -da -ba. Holiday, the best version of BVS was the ultimate uncut edition. version. The ultimate edition. That's the that's the one that they should have put out originally. 
Doug Jones. Da -da -da. Jason Isaac is in 15. Now, he, since you're on I, IMDb, look at the guy who's playing that new, the new science, whatever, the um, security right. officer. All right. So, so the guy, so the supposed actor who's playing the Klingon, the albino Klingon, is only there for three episodes. And that's episode one, two, three. And then he disappears. Then What's the actor's name? His name is David E. IQBL, equal, I think. And then if we look for who, what, what's the science office, uh, the security officer's name? Do you know? Does anybody know? No, I don't. Uh, you're talking about the new security officer? Yeah. yeah. Ash, Ash Tyler. As his um, real name or his? Character name. His character name is Ash Tyler, yeah. His real name is uh, Shazad uh, Latif. Ash Tyler, Shadak Satif, is there for 15 episodes. We never saw him in episode one, two, or three. Really? So he Did was you see him in episode one, two, or three? Yes. He wasn't in episodes one, two, three. No, he wasn't. Yeah. So that theory started to make more sense that he probably did a mind transfer and his main body is somewhere else off in the cut. Oh, God damn it. Just say. And as far as the Gamblet movie, we're getting that, I, what was it announced? 2019 Valentine's Day? Yeah, 2019 Valentine's Day for Gambit. It's 2019 Valentine's Day and do we really need it? No. But we're going to get it. It may turn out to be good. You never know. That is true. Now they probably learned their lesson, looked at uh, Deadpool, and see what works, and hey, could be good. And it looks like it's going to be a smaller movie this time, so I'm fine with that as long as it's not like you know they're trying to overdo things. The first and it's place. filming in New Orleans, so it has that going for it. We should go back to his roots as a criminal. But anyway, going back to Star Trek, we all enjoyed the episode because we could stay on forever at this point <laughs> and talk like about. Like Charles said, I've agreed with the sentiment too. It is getting better week to week, in my opinion. Some might not like it, but I like what they're doing. The production value, I think, is awesome. Yeah. The way they got the ships looking and all that is great. Oh, yeah, production value is good. Um, and the stories have been really poignant. Again, um, it's taking those elements. I love the fact that they mentioned the Enterprise. Um, at the very beginning of the episode, when you were running, do we see it? That's going to be a question. no. We're not going to see it. Gonna see it. Nah, I mean, if you're going to do that, you're going to. You, it's going to be a battle where the Enterprise will come in, and you may only hear the captain's voice, and that's it. Well, the Collider crew is thinking we get the Enterprise before the end of the season. I don't think I don't see this show right now. Does not need that at all. Like you don't even but look at. Look at all the Easter eggs they're dropping per episode. Oh, no, you can drop Easter eggs. It doesn't matter. The episode, look, the thing about it is this is that, yeah, the Easter eggs are great, but the storyline in the show is just better. So I see what they could do. They could just go, you know how they could talk? We see him. We see the um, Isaac Jones character talking to Chris Pine, not Chris Pine, but Captain Pike on the Enterprise. Having a conversation. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's it. You just, you can do, you can just. He was this. name dropped already, so yeah, I, right, what's left? Just show him on a stupid hologram screen. Exactly. And he's on the bridge of the Enterprise, barking some crap out, and boom. Yeah, there's I your mean, Enterprise tie in. It, it, that will only happen when they're going into war at some point, or they have to, they have to fix the Klingons in some sector of space. So that's, I think that's pretty much it. Anyway, let's move on. Um, you watch the Walking Inhumans. Dead. Inhumans. Let's no, just walk. get that out the way. No, let's do it. Walking Dead. Let's do Walking Dead. Since oh, I already said Walking Dead sucked. I don't even want to talk about it anymore. It was trash. Wow, it was that bad, really, for a season over. Oh, God, dude. It didn't even keep my interest. I just played on my phone while I was listening to it. Okay. Um, let's cover Inhumans quickly because, you know, I don't watch that either. People oh, say, you know what? I'm sorry. I forgot to watch Inhumans. <laughs> See? Really? Yeah, I mean, it's not, 
Yeah, um, I did get caught up, but then the most recent episode, I didn't watch it because I got uh, I got sidetracked. Well, the royal family, for the most part, is all back together with the exception of Crystal and Lockjaw. Yeah, I, I, I would assume that she's still at the farm, right? No. Okay. They teleported to the beach. Really? So now yeah. that, that farmer guy is like, like, who are you? Are you uh, like an inhuman or something? She took him with her. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I kind of figured she would because the second that the two of them like met up, I was like, yep, they're going to bang. Oh, um, what's some um, the, the Chinese guy's name? Uh, Karnak. Karnak, he hooked up with the chick. Oh, I know he did. Well, then the guy was kind of jealous and he tried to shoot him. And I would assume Karnak survived. Yeah, because he hit the cut the bullet in half and it hit the girl in the side, but it wasn't. Shut up. I don't need to hear anymore. I'm good. <laughs> that, like I said, I'm enjoying it. It's a shame that it's most likely going to be canceled. Hopefully they don't cancel it and they just move it to like Netflix well, to, to, to or be, something because it's not going to move. It has Netflix. potential. The thing is, is, I agree. In humans, does have potential, but the thing is, even if ABC doesn't want to air it anymore, I guarantee you, Disney will try to bring it to their streaming service. I am almost one hundred percent certain that that will happen. But then we gotta wait till twenty nineteen for it. Which, a, if that's what they gotta do, that's what they do. I mean, that's probably what they're gonna do with Agents of Shield because I know ABC is getting fed up with the with the reviews of that as well. They're saying like, "Yeah, we want to cancel." It's like Disney's like, "No." So just bring it to the streaming service. Um, just, if they made it a movie, it would have been 50 times better because Kevin Feige would have made sure of that. Oh, yeah. But Kevin Feige doesn't want to do Inhumans, mm -hmm. unfortunately. Even well, though there's, it plenty, was, there's plenty of material to work off of. Um, so I just, as you guys were talking about Inhumans, so I decided to just surf the message boards. And... <laughs> One one theater is posting that Justice League is going to come in at two hours and fifty minutes, so this runtime is not set. And then somebody and, and this has somebody else posted under that says maybe WB made Justice League runtime choose your own adventure four hours two hours one hours thirty three minutes. <laughs> 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 Whatever you feel like watching, <laughs> that would be funny. Yeah, and then. X-Men, well, The Gifted, let me rephrase that, is actually so much better than what it gets credit for. It is an actually good show with a good story that, yeah, it may only be 42 minutes, but they're building something that has some seriously good potential. And I like what they're doing with all the characters. Blink doesn't know how to use her powers yet, so it's kind of like her origin into using them. The kids that they introduced, the one that can like just move things with the move of his arms. He, once he learns his power, I think he's going to be great. And his sister, she is also pretty strong. I just like what they're doing. And then the guy from um, Incorporated, I like his power. What's his power? He just shoots something. He just shoots a beam of light out of his hands that causes damage. Isn't he Cannonball? So this be. What are their? He's Eclipse. His name, his mutant name is Eclipse. Oh, he's, he's formerly known as Sunspot. I think. No, he's Sunspot. a made-up character for the TV show. Oops. And where are the X-Men? Well, they stated the X-Men and the Brotherhood have disappeared. So this kind of fits that into darkness, days of future past timeline, in my opinion, like the very beginning stages of that, since the X-Men. And the Brotherhood have both vanished. And they're not around. Hmm. Yes, yeah, see, I know. By that look. This is why I don't Your like, distaste I mean, for Brian Singer's universe. It's it's like weird timelines and then... Okay, fine. I know I like the actor from uh, Incorporated. There are so many characters from the X-Men universe you could actually just put in if you wanted to and not create your own. And the good thing is they're not being skimpy with like the CGI and stuff. So the like the production value looks good. They had some Sentinel spiders two episodes ago. 
Yeah, no Professor X. But I don't need Professor X. Is it super sappy? Is that what this? Um, yeah, I don't even know. like. Okay, knowing me, should I should I care to watch this? Will I actually like it, or I will still be pissed? I will give the like. I don't know your your standards on TV shows, but I will give the first three episodes a shot. If you don't like it after the three, then it's just not for you. Because we're three episodes in, or aired the fourth one tonight. Well, they have Thunderbird in this, and one of the original X Men. <laughs> like I said, the first three episodes, because I binged two and three together, and I was like, "Oh man, this is awesome!" I just like what they're doing. All right, cool. Let's move on to Supergirl. Oh God, do we have to really? It just. Ugh. Uh, do you want to say anything about that, <laughs> Charles? Um, I'm, I'm, uh, the episode we're going to talk about is the one with that psychic using people's fears against them. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's the episode I watched. Um, I'm, I'm not sure how I feel about this new season. Something about it just feels off. I can feel something coming, but I can't figure out what. And to be honest, that woman that had the daughter, Ruby, I... I, at first, I didn't know who she was going to be, but then I looked it up, and it turns out she's going to be the villain this season. She's going to be Rain. And, and so... Um, Dude, she's giving me the vibe of Smallville's Doomsday. Like, the way they brought yeah. his reveal. Yeah, I, I get that, too, because the, the, when I looked up Rain on the wiki, she does not look human at all. Well, I think she's human now. And then afterwards, her true form will come out. Yeah, but the thing is, how are they going to explain it? And how are they going to explain Ruby? I mean, it's just, I mean, if she's like an alien or if she is what she is from the comics, being a world killer, being a, bio, a bioengineered weapon, then how are they going to explain that she has a kid or how she even got to Earth? I mean, it, I, I, I can see a lot of problems coming. And I just, of course, one of the first problems was Lena buying Catco. Look, I like oh. Lena. I've always been a fan of her and Kara's friendship. However, I think even if she bought Catco to prevent Edge from buying it, I think I think Lena is going to be just as much a problem for Catco than Edge was going to be. Because and you know what gonna, that there, reminds me of? There, there's going to be a point where Catco is going to write an do an article or do a news piece on L Corp. It's going to be a negative new uh, uh, p negative piece, and Lena is going to try to come in and shut it down. Yep. Yeah. And that kind of it, it's they're building their friendship like they had Clark and Lex in the first few seasons of Smallville. Mm -hmm. I'm start. I'm starting to see that. Yeah, I'm starting to see that. And my and our me and Lou's buddy H is going as soon as he finds out that I'm starting to see that he's going to start laughing at me and he's going to start saying like I told you so because he knew Lena was going to be a villain from the start. All right. While y'all are we're talking about Supergirl, just a quick trivia for you all. Do you know where this actor originally started? What DC movie? I don't know who that is. Uh, he looks familiar, but I can't think of his name. That is the original Jimmy Olsen in the original Superman movie. He plays the cop oh. that Cyborg saves in that scene where you know the um, the tank is thrown in. What in Justice oh, League? Okay. Yeah, in Justice League. Just just throwing it out there for you. Well, well, we're talking <laughs> we're talking um, uh, Supergirl. You know, this is a Superman connection of a different guy, but. Hmm. Let me put that out there. Yeah, I agree with you guys. Uh, <laughs> Supergirl was uh, to me. It's... To me, there are two things that I didn't like in that episode. One, again, the most powerful mind reader, psychic in the DC universe, cannot handle just some regular villain. She's too powerful. Uh, well, the thing is, the thing that I don't understand about that is that yes, Martian Manhunter is supposed to be like the most powerful psychic on the show, and he got beat by a pissant human, metahuman. I'm sorry, it, no, that just no, it, it doesn't make sense to me. It doesn't. The power levels are just oh god, and Win is honestly annoying. I like Win. I actually like him. Oh, this season, Win is annoying. 
I like him a lot. I've always been a fan of him ever since season one. However, I don't like what's going on between Alex and Maggie. Just the whole discussion of the wedding and everything. And then coming to find out before the season even started that Maggie, the actress that plays Maggie, has been downgraded to a uh, guest starring role over the course of the entire season. So she's going to have a much smaller role this season. And that was her own fault because she said she wants to pursue other acting gigs. I don't know. So she went from having a consistent paycheck, maybe being on almost every episode, to probably being on mostly all of the first half and nothing in the back half. I don't because even think I don't even think Alex and Maggie uh, are going to uh, get married. I okay, think so. Let's let's just move away from Supergirl. I, I, but I agree with you; they might not get married. Most likely, no, uh, they're probably not going to get married. I think something's going to happen between the two of them that's going to force them to call off the wedding, and that's when Maggie is going to go away for a while. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. So that's going to suck. Even though I think at the end of last season, when Alex just abruptly said, like, will you marry me? I'm like, really? I mean, you guys have only been together for like, what? Okay, but less than a year. We're looking. We're, we're seeing this in like a five month stretch, but in that five months, a lot of time goes by. It was for every TV show like this, not just a superhero show, but TV shows like this with that number of episodes per season. It is throughout that entire season. It is over the course of one year in that world. So from from episode one of season two all the way to the final to the season finale, that stretches of about a year. And Car and Alex and Maggie didn't start dating until about a little bit, a little bit more than uh, than halfway through. All right, let's move on to Barry Allen. Yeah, that I did watch and I liked it. I thought it was funny. Uh, I like uh, it had uh, its moments. The the villain, the villain, I didn't really care for. Um, with uh, even though I liked his ability being uh, being a technopath, being able to control technology with his mind, I I've always been fascinated by that ability. However, I thought he was a bit of a weak villain. I'd have to say the best part of this episode was Cisco and what was going on with him. I I thought that was hilarious. I thought that was hilarious, and then of course, uh, just seeing him and Gypsy actually being together now, I'm like, yay! <laughs> I, I, I really, I really liked like that. I thought it was great, and I, th- I, I, I mean, look, I, Yo, I, I thought, I thought, I thought I, I, Valentine's Day is hilarious. One plus one plus one day. It was like one 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 day is what she called it. I'm like, uh, who? I mean, look, I don't think you would call it that on any Earth, but okay, whatever. <laughs> It's like I like it, like my mushy one by one day. It's like uh, uh, I would. Yeah, but the, the, the thing that I the thing that I I thought was weird is that she said that one 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 day is the day that you spend with the person that you love. Keyword there, love. So apparently, Gypsy loves Cisco. Well, you gotta I mean, understand they've been off season six months past. Yeah. So they've been dating for six months. The only well, the thing is, were, were they dating at the end of season two? I mean, no. season, three. season three, I mean. Yeah, season three. Yes, yeah, she had kissed them. They that started that, that kiss, and then from there, dating. the kiss started the off-screen romance. That's what you just got to take it with. Yeah. <laughs> All yeah. right, whatever. But uh, the thing I am waiting for this season is for those people that Caitlin was working for are going to show up. Because I can see them just popping in at Star Labs because you know how their security is. And uh, t- and basically dragging uh, Caitlin out of there. Well, like I said last week, you weren't here. Mm-hmm. The people she worked for is Katie Stackhoff's group. Oh, so Ka- that's that's who Katie Stackhoff is going to be in the show. Okay, she's going to she's going to be working for the Thinker, and then hence she has her own underground network of bad guys or doing things mm-hmm. that they did. So. Yeah. That's who I think when she pops up, she'll be back. She's one episode the first half, and they'll probably have her do a little bit more in the second half because you don't get someone of her stature to do a one-off. Yeah. No, no, definitely not. But I- I'm curious, is the thinker a, me- a metahuman? I don't know. I don't, I don't think he is because um, I think he's just a very – I think he's just a very smart man that was able to build a machine that enhanced his intelligence. 
Because that's what that machine is that he's sitting in. I think it's a machine that enhances intelligence. I really can't remember. He's he's the DC version of Professor X with that chair. Uh, l loosely, but um, the animated version where he had the hover chair. Yeah, I know, but he's not a hover chair in this. He's yeah, I thought it was Metron for a second. Yeah, I knew it wasn't Metron, but I was like, what is Metron doing in Flash? Um, but anyway, yeah. Uh, moving on to Legends of Tomorrow. Uh, I enjoyed uh, it. Look, no, uh, <sighs> Legends of Tomorrow this this season has been. Decent, but I, do, I like the whole idea of the Time Bureau. That's going to be interesting. And that woman that works with the Time Bureau, I can see a lot of conflict between her and Sarah. I mean, there already is, but I can see it getting even more intense as the season progresses. You want to know what I see going on later in the season? What? Those two swapping spit. Oh, going to kiss and everything? Yeah, because Sarah's Oh, gay. God, that's what they're building. They're, the, the way they got them two going... Those two are going to do the bump nasty before this season is done. You know what? With, with as ludicrous as Lens of the Tomorrow is, I can see that happening. I really can. I mean, it's just, I don't know. I mean, Sarah has a way with women that even makes straight women sleep with her. Wow. Just, I mean, wow. I, I don't know. But Okay, Legends of Tomorrow, let's move on to Flash. Well, one thing, one thing, I, one thing, one thing I wanted to say about the most recent episode of Legends of Tomorrow is that I was not expecting to see Billy Zane show up this early this season. I was hoping that he would show up at a later date, but I do like how they did the whole Titanic references in this episode because that was hilarious. Oh man, the meme that I saw today oh. was hilarious. Yeah, where he says that, and then he's showing him saying it's the safest, safest ship ever built. <laughs> and then, of course, uh, Stein said, like, yeah, I mean, I will never set foot on the Titanic. Anyone who designed that shit, that ship should be shot. Yeah. yeah, I thought that was great. Yeah. I said, Legends is fun. Arrow, the only thing that was good about Arrow was the fact that they referenced Bruce Wayne. Mm -hmm. Other than that, this episode was fun. I, I will say, though, I do like Canary, and I do like the fact that they, they actually show her yell. You know how before they never used to show it properly? I just like that fact. And I like this Canary is not – she doesn't mince words, at least. You know, she's like – I'm sorry. Like, I want to know Mr. Terrific's hair secret, how you can go <laughs> from an afro one second and braids the next. What invention did you make? To do that, because, damn it, how could you be in the fucking bunker one minute and then in the next minute you're out on the field and your hair is slick back braided? Yo, okay, uh, I got an answer. I got yeah. an answer for that. I have an answer for that. He is secretly a metahuman, and that's his power. <laughs> <laughs> Instant braids. <laughs> this is too serious, man. This is what do. Oh God, he, he, it, like in Batman. They would go down the pole and change into their outfits. So he oh. must have a secret pole that braids his hair. <laughs> All right. Uh, speaking God. of Batman, um, uh, you guys don't watch this show, but it's something that I have to get off my chest. Gotham, of course. Yeah. yeah. Why? Look, if you're going to introduce Rachel Ghoul, why would you kill him off that freaking quickly? Because he can I mean, come back anytime. Yeah. Well, no, no, he got stabbed with that special blade that basically like permanently kills him. And just, when has Rachel Rachel Ghoul ever been permanently killed with Gotham? Well, the thing, the whole purpose of Rachel Ghoul going after Bruce Wayne is because he wants Bruce Wayne to kill him so Bruce Wayne can become his heir and become the new demon head. It's just, I mean, no, I just, I, I think, I mean, this show, had, this season had been fine so far. I thought the stuff going on with uh, Cobblepot was great. I thought the stuff going on with, uh, with Nigma was fine. I thought in the introduction of Solomon Grundy, I thought was pretty freaking surprisingly good. But the thing that they did with Rachel Ghoul, it's like they wasted the character. They wasted him. And it was, it, it was, it, it was disappointing. It was really disappointing. And that's Gotham for you. A I like Gotham, show. so you can kiss my ass. It's Gotham. a disappointing show. The biggest disappointment oh. on network television. But, Let's create a show with no Batman. 
What but let's make him Batman in the third year. Fuck you. Well, he's hey, not. He's not. Hey, Batman. hey, 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 hey people, man, come on. He's just a vigilante currently. He has. He has a taken a stupid brat who thinks he looks cool with that god awful mask. He is or... surprisingly not a brat at all. He's doing this for the right reasons. That's I just what they all say. My only problem with it is that it's too early. Bruce Wayne is still too young to be taking on the role of a vigilante. He doesn't start becoming Batman until his early twenties. He's like sixteen in the show now. Again, who cares? I do. No. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, guys, that is pretty much it. <sighs> Thank you very they much. should get married and call it a day. Who should get married and call it a day? I am married. It, it's been a slow week. News? Um, now, before we wrap it up, we have the wonderful show coming out this Friday. What is going to be our schedule for it? What show is coming out Friday? Oh, Stranger, Stranger Things. things. Mm. Uh, I don't know. Monday will, Monday will be Stranger Things, pretty much. So we're just going to incorporate it with our review? Yeah. Let's see if I can get to finish it. It's Halloween weekend. Let's go parties. Really? Mm-hmm. Really? And Warren's coming to town because it's his birthday, so, yeah. It's his birthday? Yeah. So he wants to come to New York? I mean, where else would you party? I mean, really? The guy comes to New York like every other month for a phone event. <laughs> it doesn't mean he parties in New York every other month. But, but really? Oh, my Lord. Just say it, man. Just say it. So, bam. Yeah, and we'll be lucky if we get Stranger Things in this week. <laughs> we will get some. We will definitely get some. I'll finish it. I don't know about you. You'll finish that collection of alcohol you got in that corner. None. I have none. It's just uh, fruit juice. Yeah, okay. <laughs> in Your Instagram story tells a different story. <laughs> anyway, guys. Uh, definitely subscribe to the channel. Thank you very much. And always enjoy your entertainment. <laughs> Bye-bye. Uh -oh.